Chris Petri here. Hey everyone, great time to come along here and paint along with us. We're doing a sailboat and a lighthouse in the same painting. Can you believe it? We're going to have a great time. Stick with us here. This is the finished painting. I hope you'll take this painting and you'll uh, actually work from this. Try to work from the watercolor paintings that we do paint here on this channel. Um, I find that you'll do a lot better with your watercolors if you're painting from a finished watercolor painting um, versus uh, photographs. So um, this here, we're going to just zoom in a little bit and you can paint right from this. You can draw from this. And you can also hit pause when we're doing our drawing. Uh, just in a few uh, minutes or so, we're going to start drawing this uh, uh, painting. We're going to draw first. You can also hit pause and then work from the pencil sketch that we do here. So, main thing is, um, if you can paint from this finished watercolor painting, you're going to have a, a great time at it. You'll see all the colors really clearly in this painting and you'll be able to match them with the colors that we're going to use in our palette that we're going to uh, have here in this uh, video. So have fun, enjoy, uh, you know, grab a cup of coffee, your favorite beverage, take your time, follow along. We're going to have a great time. And again, this is the finished painting. You can uh, do a screen capture of this. You can print it out on your printer if you have a printer at home, and then uh, you can work from that. So we'll just start in a few seconds. I'll just zoom in a little more. All right, everybody, you just saw the finished painting. Welcome back again. We're going to get started here. We're going to do our drawing and we're going to do our painting. So the first thing we always do when we're creating our painting, we're going to look and we're going to say, where are we going to put our hash marks so that we have a good starting point for our painting around the border of our painting? We have our tape. And so let's do a pencil mark just so you can see. This is the tape, so I'm going to do a dark pencil line where the tape is. Okay, so there you can see the tape. Then we're going to look and we're going to say, all right, we're creating a beautiful ocean seascape with a sailboat on the left and a lighthouse on the right. So let's start out. The uh, water the ocean is going to be about not quite halfway, but about maybe one third. So one third up if we have, let's say we have thirds here. One third, two thirds, three thirds, right? We're going to have our ocean start about one third, maybe a little above there. Okay, so we're going to say this is the uh, ocean. And let's say we're gonna we're gonna do the sailboat. Let's have the sailboat about if this is halfway approximately. If this is halfway. We're gonna make the sailboat about here, center. Sailboat. And uh, let me just put sailboat here. And then here we're going to have our lighthouse. And then uh, over here, let's have our Let's have our building here, so we'll call this a uh, building. Building. And we, that should be good. We're, we're going to see how that, we're going to see how this actually works out for us. But again, if you're doing hash marks, wow, 
Does that help you out when you're doing hash marks? Because this way, when you're starting out, uh, you know, drawing your your uh, before you paint, and you're doing your preliminary sketch, and then your contour drawing, which is usually our process. We do a preliminary sketch. First, we do our layout. So first thing we do is we lay things out. We get our hash marks. We find out where the light's coming from. Light's coming, let's say, on this one here. We're going to have the light coming from here. So we put our light insignia with our little bulb. And that's our light. Our light's coming from the right side, going this way in the picture. Sunlight. We're out in the ocean. We have a lighthouse, a sailboat. So we just remember light's coming from here. And then, uh, again, hash marks. Ocean here, lighthouse here, straight up from here, building, one of our main buildings here, halfway point, sailboat over here, about center of this area here, the second half of the painting, over here on the left side. So we divided it in thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds, and we have our ocean about one third of the way. And then if we divided it this way, about halfway, sailboat's going to be here. And then our lighthouse and building over here on the right side. So let's go with that. Again, hash marks, very important. Once you get your hash marks in, you're really set. Then you're not guessing where you have to put anything. You're already set. You know approximately where you're going to be going with your subject matter. And uh, that should be it. So... Uh, let me just mention, hey, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We have tons of great new information, new techniques, new methods here, all watercolor. So everything here on this channel is water-based media, watercolors. We do ink and wash, and then we do every type of imaginable subject matter, seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes. We do figure painting, flowers. We do it all here. So keep coming back as long as you hit that subscribe button down on the right-hand side of your um, screen here, you'll hit subscribe, then you'll hit also the notification bell, it's a little bell insignia on the right hand side, you click that bell button, and this way if you click the bell to notify you, this way you'll always know when our videos are coming out, this way you can watch it quick, if you like the video, you can keep watching and then you can paint along with it, if maybe you want to wait till the next week, then you wait till the next week and you paint the next painting, maybe you're not so enthused about flower paintings, but you love seascapes like this one. So subscribe and you'll, you'll always get new videos. And again, we're always doing techniques, methods, information is power. So always remember that more information, more power. You're going to have success with your watercolors. The more information you have, the more knowledge you have. Knowledge is power. So remember that knowledge is power. Get your knowledge. Keep coming back. We're doing watercolors every week here on this channel. Chris Petri here. And we'll come right back and we'll start doing our preliminary sketch and our contour drawing. And then after that, we're going to start our painting, okay? All right, we'll be right back. Okay, we are back, everybody. Welcome back again. Hey, we're going to start our watercolor drawing right now. So we're going to do our preliminary sketch and then we'll do our contour drawing. So preliminary sketch is basically a super light sketch just to get everything where you want it and then once you're done with that then you go over the top with a uh, contour drawing. Alright so we have our water, our ocean line, our horizon line for our ocean. So if you want you can you can take a ruler. Uh, you could you could do a ruler. You could do anything. You can any kind of straight edge, straight edge, maybe like a piece of wood. Anything you want. I'll use a ruler here, and we'll get our horizon line for our ocean, like that. Looks good. And now, preliminary sketch, sailboat here. We're using our hash marks. Sailboat's going to be here. All right, now where's the sailboat compared to the horizon line of the ocean? All right, it's a little bit lower. 
So let's do this. It's about this way. There we go. That's one sail. Then we have the mast here. And we have the second sail over here. A little bit higher. There we go. Then we have some rigging here. Rigging. I'm doing some rigging. I just want to do my preliminary sketch. Okay, this is the front of the boat. Okay. There we go. Now sometimes you're going to find that when you do a preliminary sketch it's good enough and you, you don't need to do more. You don't need to do a contour drawing. That's fine too. You be the, you know, you're the artist. You make the decision. If you find that your preliminary sketch is good enough then you can just let it go with that and just start painting after you do your preliminary sketch. You decide whether, you know, you want to do a contour drawing over the top of this. I might do that. I'm not sure yet, but it looks like it's coming along pretty good. Okay, here's a pier. So there's a pier over here and there's uh, um, some rocks and it's like a little island over here where this lighthouse is. So I'm going over here. Preliminary sketch again. Okay, here I'm doing the rocks. There's some rocks. Okay, then there's more rocks, and then there's large rocks here. Okay, just to get a feel. Okay, I went a little bit overboard. Let me do this. Let me erase a little bit. You can always erase a little bit if you find you've gone off a little bit, maybe on scale. I think I went off on the scale here. I was supposed to do a little bit okay I definitely went off on the scale and that's good now we're gonna do the uh, lighthouse there's a uh, there's a roof here, a roof here, and then now the lighthouse is only about here, top of the lighthouse is about here. I'm using my pencil as a guide for myself, a little like almost like a ruler. I'm using my pencil and I'm holding it up to the picture I'm drawing from. I can't show you the picture because it's a book. It's someone else's uh, photograph. I don't want to copy that and get in trouble online here with uh, copyright issues so I'm just gonna so that's about where the top of the lighthouse should be about there so we're gonna go up here there we go lighthouse okay so the lighthouse is there looks good and then we have the light of the lighthouse like that and like that. there we go perfect okay and then over here there's another lower rooftop here like that and then over here we have another another house right on this island here a beautiful house here right on this island and that should be good
All right, now, as you can see, we did the preliminary sketch. We got everything the way we wanted to. Now I'll go over with a contour drawing, which is basically just, I'm going to go over one more time. And just... Make sure I do the drawing correct. Okay, there's the cabin area. And again, I'm taking my time. A little bit of erasing and I think we're good uh, what else can we do here I think that's good actually and you're really gonna have a lot of fun with this once we start painting you're gonna see we're gonna do a little bit of something different today I'll erase that line there on the uh, sails just a little bit I think that'll look a little better. Okay, the ocean is really going to make this beautiful, this uh, painting. Let's take a break now. We did our preliminary sketch. We did our contour drawing, as you can see. We took a little bit of time. We went over a second time. Um, Couple flags on the top of the sails here. Uh, maybe we'll have a maybe a flag here, a flagpole here. And I think we're all set. You're really going to enjoy this. Please come back in just a second. We're going to do some incredible, beautiful painting of the ocean and the sky, and the subject matter. A gorgeous sailboat, lighthouse. We have a beautiful uh, structure here, a nice house. Um, we're going to have um, some windows, some doors. You're going to see how this really turns out beautiful. All kinds of interesting colors. Red, we're going to have a red painted foundation for this house. We're going to have a gorgeous black uh, lighthouse here with all the interesting black wrought iron railings around the top of the lighthouse. You're going to really have fun with this. Okay, we'll be right back. The drawing is now done. We'll come right back. Woohoo! You're going to see how fun this is. And wait till you see, we're going to break out some new colors. Not only are we going to do these colors, we're going to break out a whole bunch of new colors to make this ocean and sky color look absolutely incredible. Okay, be right back. All right, welcome back. We're going to start our painting. We're going to have a really fun time here. This is really interesting. You're going to love this. We're going to add some new colors to our palette just for this painting. And uh, that's all, just for this painting. Uh, but before we do that, let's use some thin tape here. You can see I have some thin tape. Maybe I'll tone down the light a little bit. Looks like a little bit bright. Okay. We have some thin tape here. Let's get our really crisp, sharp edge for our water. So I'm just going to put my tape right on that line that we created earlier. 
where we have the uh, horizon line where the ocean is, the ocean horizon line. So I just take my tape and I put it down where the line is, the pencil line where we used our ruler. And that's all. We just do that. Perfect. There we go. And then we just press along the bottom edge where that is there. And we're going to paint along that line where our water is. And we're going to really get exciting colors here. All right, now look at this. We're going to add in a whole bunch of colors. If you, some of you, I know you're really excited about colors. You have extra colors, extra tubes of paint. This is the perfect time. Take your extra tubes of paint that you have, your greens and your blues that you might not use all the time. If you're really being disciplined, you're going to stick with one palette all the time. If you're painting with me every week, you'll stick with the same palette we use every time. Get used to that palette. Memorize the, You'll memorize the colors. If you paint all the time with the same palette, you'll memorize the colors, the names of the colors. You'll actually memorize them with your vision, with your eyesight, so that you really can identify them. When you look at a painting right away, you'll know, oh, that artist used alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, cerulean blue. You'll know right away when your eyes are set to your palette that you use on a consistent basis. So I always say, stick to your same palette week after week, month after month, year after year. Then on a painting like this, we're just going to go for it, have a fun time, do something a little different. Just take a whole bunch of blue and greens. Let's see what we have here. I, t I went into my uh, cabinet where I had all my paints. Let me see what we have. We'll use some different paints today. We have cobalt turquoise, phthalo green, Antwerp blue, cobalt green, peacock blue, and phthalo blue. So we're going to add these colors along with the colors that we always use every day, our normal everyday palette here. So again, we had cobalt turquoise, phthalo green, Antwerp blue, cobalt green, peacock blue, and phthalo blue. So those are just some new fun colors we're going to put into this painting in particular. Not that we're doing this every time. We're always sticking with our main palette. Does that make sense? We stick with our main palette and then we memorize it and we always know all those colors 100%. These here, we have extra ones we found in the studio. We're just going to have fun today and go just go crazy and add some extra colors in here. Why not? All right, so what I'll do is let's have fun. Let's go crazy today. We'll take our watercolor brush, fresh clean water. So I'll use my Raphael number eight uh, round brush, watercolor brush. Easy to identify if you're going to buy one. It's got the orange tip on it. Okay, we're going to use that. And then we're going to take our colors here. Let's just put them in to our palette. Maybe I'll keep the greenish colors in this area here and then the bluish ones over to the right. So I'll keep my greenish looking colors over here. Uh, we had cobalt, so that was cobalt turquoise here, the first one. Now we're using cobalt green. Look at that. Oh. And one more green we had here. Phthalo green. That's a really powerful, strong green. We don't need a lot of that, just a little bit. And this one here too, sometimes you'll find if you haven't used a paint in a long time, it's going to going to be sometimes tough to get the paint out. Let me see if I have something here. I'll take something and try to there we go and I'll just squeeze this in. let's see if that works 
So I'm just trying to fold up my paint here. I haven't used this in probably years and years and years. There we go. I'm using a, a chopstick here that I use with my paints. I sometimes use chopsticks for um, ink and wash, using ink as a, uh, a bamboo pen or whatever. I use Sometimes I use a chopstick for that. And then we have, let's use our blues now. Now we're going to use phthalo blue. And since some of these colors have been sitting around the, in the drawer for a long time, sometimes I can't guarantee it's going to turn out perfect when I go to open up the tube and see. Peacock blue. This was phthalo blue right here. Phthalo blue, peacock blue. There we go. Antwerp blue. Antwerp blue. There we go. And then we'll use our normal everyday palette colors here. Alright, let's get into our ocean colors. You're not going to believe how good this looks. I'm going to use some burnt sienna, burnt umber, some sap green right over here like that. Then we're going to go in and do our other colors and just mix them all up. Look at that. Look at that. There we go. Okay, we'll use these for the closer to us, the darker blues we're going to use for the distance here. Look at that. Whew. Wow, is that exciting or what? Everyone, look at the colors, right? That is exciting. You can use these colors anytime you want. If you have those tubes of paint that you haven't used in a year or two or three, get them out today on this one, right? And just get them in there. Look at that. And we're just going to Continue to work these down. You can see I'm putting the colors on thick. Like that. Thick and rich. Straight. Squeezed to paint. You can see I'm using squeezed. Fresh squeezed to paint. No messing around with trying to scrub dry paints off my palette. That does not work. If you're trying to use dried paint you're not going to ever get a good look like this if you're trying to do that. So try to always keep your paints moist. If you haven't checked out my videos, you can look up uh, anything. You just type in Chris Petri palette and you'll see 10 videos of how to keep your palette with, you know, fresh, squeezed, juicy paint. There you go. Look at that. Ooh. Look at that. Now, let's go in. We'll use some of our greens. We're getting closer to the shore. Look at that. Get the, get the paint on there. Get that brush down on the ferrule there. Can you see that? Look at that incredible color. Whew. 
Look at that. Then you go in and you get some yellow ochre. Gets fire in some yellow ochre. Look at that. Just to get some of that warm, warm feel. Yellow ochre, raw sienna. There you go. Then I usually tap in a little bit of splashes just to That looks incredible. Now, let's do the sky wash right away. Sky wash right away. Let's get right into it using all the same colors. French ultramarine blue, cerulean blue. Look at that. Oh. Okay, leave some clouds in there. Leave some clouds in there if you have to tap up some paint with your tissue just to get some clouds. Do that. I'm mixing up those same colors over there. Over here, same thing up in the sky. Let's use those same colors as we used in the ocean water. Up here in the sky colors. And then here, a little hit and miss. Leave some white paper as you go down lower here. Let's leave the sky light here. Like that. Let's leave the lighter tones there. Then we use some of that yellow ochre for the base of the sky, maybe a little bit of a lizard and crimson. A little bit of that warm feel to the horizon line of the sky. And uh, Okay, let's lift up that tape. Carefully, carefully, nice and slow. Lift up your tape that you put on for the sky, or for the ocean. Look at that, wow. Perfect ocean horizon line there. And then we just go in with our yellow. And we meet up with the ocean there, with the... There we go, that's all we have to do. And as you can see, if you have a little issue with the uh, paint reactivating, no problem, lift up with the uh, tissue. I'm doing some more uh, yellow ochre here. Look at that, right? Beautiful. Now, let's get in some shadowing. Here we have some shadowing on the lighthouse. It's quite dark. Burnt umber, add some burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, then a little bit of these blues over here. And we just want to
and then we soften that over like that. Okay, so we just want to soften that shadow like we just did there for the White House. Um, what else are we going to do here? All right, at this point, let's let this 100% dry. Sometimes we have to let things dry in watercolor. That makes things a lot easier. So if we let this dry right now at this stage, we're going to be so much better off when we start doing our uh, finishing touches to the painting. And then here, let's just go in. We have a little more... So I just did a little more details right here to the top of the sailboat. And uh, what else do we have there? Yeah, we have quite a bit of water under there. Now you remember, you're going to paint from this finished painting we're doing right now. So don't worry about my photograph, what I'm using to look at. I can't show it because it's, you know, a copyright infringement. So I have to work, and then you work from my finished paintings. You'll really gain a lot, a lot of uh, success if you're painting from watercolor paintings themselves versus trying to paint from a photograph or even from real life, from still life, from or from plain air. If you paint from finished watercolor paintings, you're going to learn a lot because you can actually match the colors better. You can match the look of the watercolor and you can see how the washes are going to be put onto the paper by studying watercolor themselves, the paintings. So try to work from my finished watercolor paintings if you can. It'll really help you a lot. And uh, I'm just doing a little touch up here and there. Alright, now that you see what we have here, let's maybe We could do a little shadowing now. This is... Okay. And I'm doing some shadowing on the bottom of the boat. Reflecting up some I'm reflecting up some of those colors from the water. There's some shadowing over here. Okay, and then I'm going to still work here. There's some shadows on this side. Some shadows over here on this side of the house over here. And that looks pretty good. I hope you're having fun with this. And uh, okay, perfect. Let's come back. We'll do the finishing touches to this, but we have to let this dry 100% now because we're really, we've done all we can do and then we need to take a break let this dry 100% and then we'll come back and we'll do our finishing touches to everything and if you have any problems with some of the water too much water building up or something you just blot it up a little bit with your tissue if you have too much water puddling up somewhere at the bottom sometimes the water puddles up in the bottom here you just go across really lightly and t touch that up but I think this is looking pretty good and you'll see that now we're at that perfect time where it's good just to take a break and then we'll come back after that and we'll do our finishing touches to everything. Okay, we'll be right back. 
All right, we're back. Hey, I just want to mention one more time. You'll always hear me say, subscribe to my channel. There's a subscribe button right down below here on the right hand side of your screen. A little red button. Subscribe. Hey, hit the subscribe button. Why not? Here on this channel, we're doing everything watercolor. So if you're interested in watercolor, uh, whether you're just watching for fun, whether you're just starting out, whether you've uh, been painting for a while, if you subscribe to this channel, you're going to be learning new things every week as we create new paintings. We're going to cover all the methods, all the techniques of watercolor. You'll learn about everything from colors, how to use the paintbrush, the palette, how to use, how much water to use when you're painting with watercolor. You're going to learn all about different styles of watercolor. We use the glazing technique. We use the a la prima technique. We discuss in depth all the details of watercolor that you need to have so that you have all the information that's going to make you a better artist. So don't worry. Stick here every week. We're going to cover all the different things you need to know as a watercolor artist that is going to take you to the next level. So your watercolor paintings are going to be better. Your drawings, you're going to get better at your drawings when you know that you need to practice your drawings. Practice drawing every day or two. Pick up the pencil, draw something around the house, whatever it is, a pencil, a cup, a saucer, a piece of fruit. Uh, look out the window, paint a house across the street from where you live or an apartment building, whatever it is that you're, uh, wherever you, whatever you have at your disposal. Practice every day your drawing skills. And then the rest is simple. We're going to cover all the painting details here right on this channel. So come on back, hit the subscribe button, also the notification bell right next to the subscribe button. This way you're notified and you'll know exactly when our new watercolor videos come out every week. I hope you'll keep joining us here. You're going to get better at your watercolors. I guarantee it. If not, you, you send me comments in the comments section here below and you just ask me questions about, you know, things that might be uh, difficult for you or you're having uh, issues with your watercolors, just send me some comments. We'll, I'll cover them. I'll answer your questions, whatever you need. We're going to get better here together. I'm always practicing too. I want to get better at my watercolors. You can see I sometimes struggle on my watercolor paintings. Um, I don't always do a perfect job. This is part of the watercolor business. Uh, it's not easy. Watercolor is a challenging medium. So that's, that's why you need to subscribe so you can keep learning and growing every week, learning new things, new techniques, new methods, um, and just learning all the, the different things you need to, uh, to get better at your watercolors. So let's continue on here. We let this dry 100% as we just talked about. Uh, so we wanted to get down our main colors, the blues and the greens of the, uh, ocean, the sky, the ocean, the sky, the ocean, everything here. A little bit of uh, yellow ochre in there too to warm it up a little bit along the horizon line and in the water too as well. Now let's finish up. We'll get our um, some finishing touches on our uh, houses here and our lighthouse and our sailboat. So uh, let's go in with some burnt umber. We're going to do some roofs now. Let's do some roofs. Burnt umber I see. And I put in a little bit of blue into that too, burnt umber, and then some blues in there. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. And you can see I just have a damp brush and straight paint to get these really dark darks here. So that's where you learn that Sometimes you really can't use too much water if you want to get a real dark dark like this on the roof here. You know, you have to just rinse the, br rinse the brush and then tap the water off on a, on a paper towel or a sponge if you have, or you use like a tissue. You check your water off on your, on something, apron, I use my apron sometimes over here. And then you just use straight paint really to get your darks. Like that. See how that you can get those really beautiful darks like that. And then over here too, this the same thing. Maybe there's a little bit of blue in there, cerulean blue. It's a little more bluish brown. So we add a little bit of the cerulean blue.
then I'm careful not to lean into the paint. And we just do that. And I'm going around the chimney. And there's a dark shadow there, like that. And there's another shadow over here, like that. There we go. And there's some windows. Do some nice little windows there. Then we have some, looks like a brick red, so let's go with a, um, a little bit of cadmium red and a little bit of um, cadmium red, burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of burnt umber, get a nice brick red there. And that's along the rocks of the island here. There's a little small island where this lighthouse is, uh, has been built along this uh, ocean uh, coastline. And we can use some yellow ochre, raw umber, burnt sienna, burnt umber, mix up some earth colors, some grays, so a little bit of cerulean blue into that and you get some grayish color and then we just put in some rock rocks and things along here the coastline no need to get too fussy here just get it in There's some green. Let's use some green, olive green. There's some green uh, grass along this, so let's make sure we capture that green grass. Then we go back into the rock colors, the cerulean blue, and then the warm colors, the yellow ochre and raw umber. So you just if you need to stop the tape when you or stop the video to get the colors, you write down the colors. If you're if you need to write down the colors, you just stop the video so you can write down what colors are I'm using. This is the the rocks are you know cerulean blue, and then some of the warmer colors: yellow ochre, raw umber, some of the burnt umber, burnt sienna. If you're uh, newer to watercolor, then you're writing down some of this information. If you've been painting a long time, you'll probably pick your own colors you want to use for your rocks. You know, you might have different colors you use for your rocks that you might want to use. So it's all up to what you want to do. I'll splash a little bit over there for the rocks. And once we do that, that looks pretty good. Um, maybe a little more cerulean blue, burnt umber, just to break things up a little bit. A little darker darks in here. looks pretty good and then we're gonna go with some uh, darks here let's go with French ultramarine blue and then we'll mix it in with some of those other colors we had there before some burnt umber so we have some we have some nice darks for the lighthouse here and if you need let's let's use our needlepoint brush 
This needle point brush is incredible. Um, you just I use this all the time in all my paintings. You can get some really fine details with it. And uh, this way we're not going to, you know, if you can use a brush like this, you're better off because you're not going to have, if you use a large brush, you're going to overpaint and you won't get the details you need that you need to have. So definitely invest in a needlepoint brush so you can get these fine details like I'm doing here with the lighthouse. You see how I'm doing the railings on this lighthouse? Does that make sense? You know, you need to have that proper brush for the fine details. If you're trying to do with a larger, this is even a small brush, you can see here I'm using a 5 Da Vinci travel brush. But even using a Da Vinci travel brush, you're not going to get the fine details like you will if you have your um, needlepoint brush. So you don't want to ruin the painting by making unpleasant looking details that are too big for what you're painting. So if I overpaint and make large splotches of color over here on this lighthouse, that's going to look terrible. So if you use a very tiny brush like this, then you can carefully put in your details and you won't get, uh, you know, have a problem with, you know, adding too much paint and water and then you ruin the painting at this point. So you want to make sure you have the right brushes. Watercolor is definitely a medium where you have to have the right tools. If you're trying to paint with large brushes and trying to do a small lighthouse detail section like this, it's going to give you a problem. So try to always have those uh, proper brushes that you need and then things will go so much smoother for you. And then uh, there's some lines on this on this uh, lighthouse here like that. Like that. They're darker on the left in shadow. can even add in a more more shadow with a really fine brush like this like that and we're really coming along here on our final details I'm going to do a careful A careful bit of uh, painting here with the flag on the flagpole here. So we'll do some of this here, red and white and blue, like that. And. Let's do a few more, uh, there's a little, a couple uh, flags at the top of this here. And a little more uh, detail here, we have raw umber. Carefully, I do a, a mast here for the sailboat. And what else do we have here? Maybe a little bit of shadowing here. Put a little bit of shadowing with some blue, just some random blue over here. Do 
There we go, some shadowing, a little bit of shadowing under the eaves of the roof here. Some dark darks here, I want to get a little more. There we go. And then here I see a little bit of a shadow. Let's get that shadow in on the side of the sail. There's a little bit of a shadow here. Let's do that. Now that's going to dry lighter. So don't worry about it. If it's a little bit darker, that's going to dry light. And you can lift up a spot or two if you want, but that's going to lighten up quite a bit. And I think we're just about completed. Let's, uh, wait a minute, let's do this here. We need a little bit of shadow over here. There we go. I'm doing a few details here, a couple windows. You don't have to do that. If you put a couple windows in and they don't look good, you can always lift them up a little bit. And uh, let's do some dark darks here. We have some interesting details. On the side of the boat here, let's do those. And some uh, darker darks over here. So I'm just doing some darker darks and some bright colors that I see in the picture. So try to, when you're painting, paint what you see. I'm looking at the colors I see. Then there's some small uh, ovals for the windows over here. And uh, there's some gold. It looks like yellow ochre, maybe some cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow. There's some cadmium yellow over here. Brighter, high intensity colors over here. And then of course we have some, some uh, wood trim on the boat here. So we're going to do that. And some shadowing there. And I think you're really going to have a fun time doing this painting. Uh, let's just finish up some details. I think we need to go a little darker over here. We picked up a little bit of that paint there. So we need to go back in and do some paint there. I think that's perfect. You're going to really enjoy trying this. Give this a try. Absolutely fun. A sailboat. Let's do some finishing touches even more. Let's get our titanium white. So we have some titanium white with a little bit of uh, yellow ochre mixed in the top of the tube so we can do this like that so you just have a little bit of yellow ochre in the white 
makes it look a lot more uh, warmer like sunlight. Okay, and then we just do some highlights. So let's see here, we got this, like that. Do a couple of these highlights, but not too many. That It'll ruin it if you, if you try too many. So here. You'll see, I'm going to do some, but not too many. That'll really ruin a painting if you do too many highlights. And I think I'm really... Um, we need to do the chimney over here. So I'm using some of that color again, that red brick color. We're going to do our chimney over here, like that. That looks really good. So I, I think we've done everything we can do. Maybe a few more highlights with the white. So I use my titanium white and my needlepoint brush. And there's some more whites here. And that's the rigging for the sails. And then we do some more this way here, a couple across this way. There we go. And if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of titanium white just for a little bit of highlights here maybe. The water is very choppy so you're not going to see a lot of uh, reflections but you could add a few over here just like that. The water is choppy so just make them like that. Just make little tiny indications of some shimmering uh, light being picked up on the water from the sails above but not too much, a couple little just like that and maybe a little bit from the lighthouse too, you can do a little bit of light just a tiny bit though, don't do too much. This is where you can really get into trouble doing too many shadows and reflections. So just a little bit of, just a couple little bits of white paint like that. And that's enough to kind of tell the story that it's a choppy day with the water, windy, and uh, you know, you're not going to see a lot of reflections. The water takes control. If you want to, you can go in with some darker blues here like this with some burnt sienna and some sap green if you want and do some darker darks along here. And that really looks good like that, dark. And then even a little bit with the uh, needlepoint brush to get some over here, actually. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, let's peel off the tape, see how that looks. It'll look much better once we peel off the tape, you'll see. There we go. 
and we'll lift up our pallet. All right, I hope you give this a try. You're gonna have tons of fun with this. We use the Alla Prima approach pretty much here. We painted it all at one time. We just let it dry once we had the major washes on. and That was only the one time that we let things dry and then we went back in and did our final details. So have fun with this, enjoy. We'll see you on the next video.